I'm so excited to have you in my home kitchen. In this chapter, I'm gonna show you everything there is to know about how to make spiced applesauce at home. I'm gonna also be canning it and preserving this applesauce in a pressure canner. The recipe that I'm gonna teach you will make four jars of the spiced applesauce. These are Honeycrisp apples, but you can use any sort of apples that you have at home. Apples really grow at their peak at the end of summer and into fall, so this is the time to save the season and be able to enjoy it all year round. So, let's get started. So in this recipe, I'm gonna be needing 12 cups of cut apples. So I'm going to be washing 15 to 20 apples. It really just depends on the size of your apples, but in the end, you wanna have 12 cups of apples. I'm gonna first start by peeling the apples. Once I peeled them, I put them in some cold water and that will hold their color. Okay, so we're gonna peel these apples. I like to make sure that I'm also cutting out anything that's bruised. You don't wanna have the bruised part of the apple. At the market, a lot of times people will have a big box of like, they call them seconds or stressed apples. These are actually great because you usually can get them for a little bit cheaper, but also they're just perfect for making applesauce. I like to peel the skin of the apple because once it gets cooked, it has like a rough texture. And I really like the applesauce to be smooth. So we're almost there, almost done. All right, all of this I give to our chickens. They're gonna love that. So now we're gonna cut the apples. While I'm chopping them, you wanna just do small pieces. It really doesn't matter what size pieces, but I like to do small ones so that it doesn't take so long to cook them down. This looks like about 12 cups of apples. Okay. All right. So I just eyeballed this, but this is about 12 cups. You can measure them, but each one is about a heaping cup. This is kind of what we're looking for. So we're just gonna throw a little bit of water on the apples. So when you turn on the heat, that will kind of loosen those apples up. And now we're gonna juice some lemons. So I'm juicing lemons. I'm gonna be adding a half a cup of lemon juice. That's gonna help hold the color of the apples because you wanna just try to keep them really a beautiful shade of gold. All right. I really want them to kind of mix in and then I'm gonna take a spoon and really mix them up so that lemon juice is gonna touch each little corner of those apples. Okay. So now we're gonna put this on the stove. Okay, so we're gonna turn it on to medium heat. I'm gonna add one cup of sugar. And the thing about when you're making applesauce, some people don't even wanna add sugar at all because they love the sweetness of the apples and it's enough sweetness, but I love a little extra sweetness so I always add sugar. This is not a one-to-one -one ratio like you would with jam, with berries. Berries have no pectin in them at all. Apples have a ton of natural pectin, so you're not trying to get it to a stabilizing point. So now that it's kind of looking watery and starting to almost come to a simmer, now is the time that I add my spices. I'm gonna be adding ground cinnamon and ground ginger. I love these spices. I think that they really bring out the flavor of the applesauce. You can add cloves, you can add the spices that you're really loving, but ginger and cinnamon are my personal favorites, so that's what I'm adding today. It's simmering pretty well right now, so I'm gonna turn the heat down just a tad, about to medium high, and I'm gonna add in a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Look how pretty that is. 
And I'm gonna add now a quarter of a teaspoon of ginger. To me, this smells like fall. It smells so good. Now I'm gonna mix that together. We're just gonna make sure that the apples have all cooked evenly. It's really good. Um, I'm gonna cook it for a little bit longer because there's still a little bit of a crunch and I'm not wanting that crunch. I'm wanting them to really kind of cook all the way through, but pretty evenly. Applesauce is so simple to make, and it's really just throwing in the sugar, throwing in those spices. All of those flavors will just meld together. I would just suggest that as you're throwing in the spices that you love, keep tasting just so that you don't overpower the apples, because you really want the apples to be the star of the show. I'm gonna taste it one more time. I'm gonna taste a big old. I think we're ready. So now we're ready to get this applesauce to the texture that you love. So I'm gonna take my potato masher and I'm just gonna start mashing the apples. If you want this super, super fine, put this in a blender and get it super, super smooth. I like to have little pieces of apple so that when I'm eating it, you can actually taste those little pieces of apple. The thing about applesauce is everybody loves applesauce in the house. We all eat it at different times. I mean, a lot of times we'll just have a lot of applesauce in the morning. Sometimes I'll throw it into oatmeal. You're not cooking it all the way down. It might be a little bit more smooth or there might be a little bit more moisture, but that's okay because it's gonna continue cooking in the pressure canner. So I think we're about done. I'm gonna turn off that heat. This is a texture that I love, and you really see all those spices with the cinnamon and the ginger. Okay, so the applesauce is done. It's ready to can. We're gonna can it in a pressure canner. I do a much deeper dive in my chapter about pressure canning. So check that out. It really tells everything there needs to know about pressure canning. But right now, we're gonna get these jars warm. So I'm gonna fill my canning jar with water and also all the jars. And I wanna make sure that the water comes up just over the jars. So these are about covered with water and now we're gonna move them to the stove. Oh, here we go. Okay. You wanna make sure that you bring your jars to a boil and then turn off the heat. And while I'm letting that boil, I'm gonna set up my canning station. Okay, so the jars are boiling. We're gonna turn off the heat. I'm gonna throw in my lids and I'm gonna throw in my bands. You wanna make sure that your jars are hot, your applesauce is hot, so that everything is staying at the nice warm temperature so nothing will break. So we're gonna pull this out. Start scooping. Make sure that there is a half an inch headspace between the applesauce and the lid. One thing that's really though important with applesauce is that you make sure that you can take a wooden skewer and get out all of the air bubbles. So there's, see there's kind of a big air bubble right there. We're gonna wanna make sure that we kind of poke around here. See, and there it goes. So the thing about these air bubbles is that they can expand in the heat and they could crack the jar. Make sure that you're getting rid of all of those air bubbles. Make sure that you're cleaning the rim really well and then you're gonna take your lid wand and get in there for a lid. Also, a band. Tighten that until you feel resistance. And we're gonna put this in the pressure canner. 
You want to make sure that your pressure canner has two to three inches of water. All right. And now you're going to repeat. Just going to put a little bit of olive oil around. It's really important that it seals really well when working with the pressure canner. We're going to tighten it up. I've turned on the heat to high. While we wait for the steam to come out of the vent, I'm going to clean up around here. Clean up around here. It's a mess. Now that the steam is coming out of the vent, I'm ready to use my pressure control. And this recipe calls for five PSI. So I'm going to put that on, and we're going to wait till it rattles one to four times every minute. So now that the pressure controller is rattling one to four times every minute, I'm going to set my timer. Each recipe is a little bit different. You want to make sure that you're setting it to whatever your recipe calls for. So this recipe takes eight minutes to process the applesauce. The jars have been processing for eight minutes, so now I'm going to turn off the heat. I'm going to wait for the pressure gauge to go down to zero PSI. Then I'm going to wait two more minutes before I take this off very carefully um, because it's still very hot. You want to make two minutes for that, and then we're ready to take out the jars. The PSI is now at a zero, so it's now safe to take off the pressure control. I'm going to take that off. And now we're ready to take this applesauce out. Make sure that you're opening this away from your face so that all the steam goes on out. OK, so just remember that the jars are still very hot, so you want to take them out with your canning tongs. Look how beautiful that color is. Sometimes, depending on the type of apple you use, it might come out pink. But this is just a beautiful golden color. Gorgeous. Make sure that you're placing them in a place where they can sit for 24 hours so that they can seal. You might hear the pop within 15 minutes or sometime within the first 24 hours. And then you're going to want to check them to make sure that they've all sealed correctly. The way that you can check that is right now, some of them have a little bit of a mound. And as soon as they seal, they will kind of almost have an indent or like a flat surface. And it will have a shelf life from six months to a year. So now these have been sitting for 24 hours. You can tell that they have all sealed because the mound is gone and they've all popped. So now I'm going to put the labels on. You really want to make sure that you're putting on the label what's in the jar. And then on top, I always put the date. OK, so there you go. Now you know how to make my spiced applesauce recipe using a pressure canner. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do.